Hello, and welcome to this second part in a two-part series on building a simple flow in Apache NiFi. In the first part, we talked about adding and configuring processors. In this part, we'll talk about connecting the processors and running them. Here we have two processors that we added and configured in the last video. We can see that the generate flow file processor is still invalid because it doesn't have a success relationship defined in an outgoing connection. If we hover over the warning symbol on the processor, we'll see that it tells us that a relationship needs to be defined. In order to create a connection, hover over the center of the processor until you see this circle with the arrow in it, and then click and drag to the other processor that you want to connect to until it's highlighted in green. Then release the mouse and a create connection window will open. Here we see that the window has a details tab and a settings tab. The details tab shows what the connection is going from and to and lists the relationships that will be included in that connection. For processors like this one that only have one relationship available, that relationship will be selected by default. So we can see that the success relationship is already selected here. Let's look at the settings tab. The settings tab has an optional name field so you can give the connection a specific name. By default, it will show the relationships that are included in the connection as the name once the connection is created. We'll leave it that way here. The ID value will be set to a unique, non-configurable ID number for the connection once the connection is created. Flow file expiration is set to zero seconds by default. That means that flow files will never expire in this connection, and this is typically what you want in most cases because you don't want your data to expire before you process it. However, sometimes data may only be good for a certain amount of time, and this is where you could set that time limit so that it'll be deleted if it's a certain age by the time it reaches this processor. Back pressure is a way to throttle how much data is going down a connection. Some processors take longer to process data than others, so if a feeding processor is really overloading the follow-on processor, this would be a way to slow down the rate of data going down that connection to that processor. You can set back pressure by object threshold, in other words, the number of flow files, or by data size, or both. Over to the right, we can see the available prioritizers. Prioritizers tell the connection how to prioritize data that's in a queue. If data is queuing up in this connection, this allows the connection to determine which flow file the next processor will process first. By default, no prioritizer is set, but you can drag a specific prioritizer to the selected prioritizers list based on your needs. Just be aware that setting a specific prioritizer can affect performance. We're going to leave the prioritizers as they are and just click Add. Now we can see the connection between the processors, and we can see that both processors are valid and ready to be started. They both have the stop symbol up in the left-hand corner next to the name. So now I'm just going to start and stop each processor. Um, you do that just by right-clicking on the processor and selecting Start. So I'll do that with both of these. And then I'm going to stop the processors one at a time, same way. And uh, we'll take a look at what's happening with the data in the data flow. So the first thing I notice is that the log attribute processor is um, logging bulletins. And I can see that by hovering over the bulletin icon here. And we had configured it in the last video to produce bulletins at the info level. So it's basically logging everything that it's doing and producing bulletins on that activity and it's showing the attributes that it's logging for each flow file, so you can see the key value pairs for those attributes there. Now let's look at the information that's on the face of each processor, and this is information about what's happened in the last five minutes for each processor. Let's compare the generate flow file processor with the log attribute processor. The generate flow file shows no data coming in, and that's because it doesn't have any incoming connections. And in fact, it's generating all of the data itself. It's not reading data, but it's creating data and writing it to disk. So we can see the read write numbers there. It also has data coming out of it going on its outgoing connection. So we can see that. 
and we can see the number of tasks it's completed over the last very short amount of time. The tasks and time information is really important for seeing how efficiently a processor is working. If you see a processor that's completing only a small number of tasks over a long period of time, that could indicate that you need to configure it differently to run more efficiently. Now let's look at the log attribute processor by comparison. It does have data coming in because it's got an incoming connection, but it's not reading data or writing it to disk because it's only dealing with attributes on the flow files which are kept in memory. It doesn't have any data coming out because it doesn't have any outgoing connections. And in fact, we configured it in the last video to terminate the data on the success relationship after it processes it. And the tasks and time is very similar to the generate flow file processor, except that it hasn't processed these flow files that are still in the connection here. Let's look at the information on the face of the connection. It shows how much data is queued. The bars turn green, yellow, then red to indicate when we're hitting the back pressure thresholds we set. The left bar is for object threshold and the right bar is for size threshold. Once a threshold is met and the bar goes red, the entire connection is outlined in red. This helps users visually trace back pressure outages to the source by following that red line from connection to connection. If we right click on the connection, we can see some options for the connection and some of these are new and kind of cool. So um, we could configure the connection, which we're not going to do right now. We've already done that previously, but we can see the status history. So this shows us in a graphical representation, the statistics for the data going through the flow. And we can see it over a longer period of time than five minutes if we were to let the data flow run longer. Now we'll go back and we can also see um, that we could bring the connection to front if it was behind something else on our canvas here. We could go to source or destination, which help, is helpful whenever um, you have a very complicated flow that may be hard to follow and maybe the connection lines are really long. You can um, list the queue. So we have files in our queue here and we can select list queue and actually see the top 100 files in our queue based on how we have the um, prioritization scheme set. And you could actually get information about each of those files by clicking on the info view details button here. Another thing that you can do that's new is you can um, empty the queue. So we're going to go ahead and demonstrate that. Um, Basically, you would use this um, perhaps if you're testing a flow and you're just using test data that you don't really care about, which is the case here, and maybe you want to change something and start all over and see how the data flow goes that time. So you could empty the queue and it'll ask you to confirm that you want to empty it. And uh, we'll go ahead and do that and it tells you how many flow files were removed from the queue and you can click OK. And now we can see that there are no longer any flow files in the queue here. So that's it. We've run all the data through our flow and that concludes um, building a simple flow in Apache NiFi. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.